My family normally does a big barbecue on Easter. We have a lot of young ones in our family and we do our egg hunt and I wasn't able to do that this year. That's the first time I haven't been able to go to a family Easter, I think, uh, ever. So this is a, you know, a pretty big disruption to not only my daily life, but, you know, just kind of like the overall long term, you know, the way I live my life. I have been coping with a number of different mechanisms. Uh, number one is my walks. I take daily walks around my neighborhood, uh, you know, in order to get some fresh air, enjoy some of this beautiful weather that we're having here in California, making sure it doesn't go to waste, uh, and trying to find a way to, to relax and breathe. I make sure I don't take my phone with me. I make sure that I am kind of in my own space and I'm able to just breathe and relax and enjoy being you know, out and about for what limited time I am able to. I've also been keeping up on, catching up on all my movies. There was a long list of movies that I had been wanting to watch that have been piling up over the, my years of grad school. And I now have plenty of time to get caught up on those. So I've been able to, to check off quite a bit of my Netflix list and my movie list, which has been really awesome. And I've also been coping with my virtual happy hour with friends. We, you know, play board games or we just sit and talk. Uh, you know, I was able to do that with my family. I had one with my undergrad friends. I've had one with my grad friends. And that has been really, really helpful. Something that I wish that, uh, you know, non-disabled individuals kind of were aware of in this situation or was paying attention to was that this whole bending the curve, the whole isolation has nothing to do with them. Right. For people who aren't in these high risk pools, it's not about you. It's about those of us who are in high risk pools, whether that's obvious, right, in our senior populations or for, you know, those who, who don't have invisible disabilities, such as myself and others. You know, a lot of my friends have reached out wanting to hang out, wanting to like, oh, it's not a big deal. Right. We're young. This isn't a problem. And I have to, again, reiterate and again and again and again that that's not an option for me. I am not one of the young people that can avoid um, having serious consequences, health consequences from this uh, virus. And so, you know, I really would wish that people would understand it's not about them. People are asking like, oh, how can I best support you? I've had friends reach out to, you know, willing to get me groceries, willing to do virtual calls, willing to run whatever errands I may need. And I think the biggest thing that people can do to support each other in this time is stay home. Right. Follow the rules, follow the organization, like the orders that have come down from the state and federal level. The sooner this is over, the better it is for everybody. And this happens sooner when we all stay at home. Right. If we all stay home, cut down our isolation and do what we can to bend that curve, then the sooner this is over and we can get back to our normal lives and we can, you know, live a life without as much risk as we currently are in now. So that is what it has been for me. I think the things that have really been helpful, things that keep me laughing throughout the day, the things that keep me on a positive mindset, uh, the Tiger King series on Netflix was a, a huge relief. And as well as uh, watching Broad City on Netflix have been keeping me in high spirits, keeping me positive, keeping me laughing um, during this time, which has been uh, at, at times incredibly stressful and throughout most of it, right, incredibly scary. So. You know, I appreciate finding the silver lining in situations like this, the ability to take time to pause and reflect on everything that's going on in our lives, the time to rest has been absolutely crucial. And so I hope that, you know, this people stay home. I hope that people stay healthy and I hope that we come through this, you know, a more connected, uh, more compassionate society.